This sermon is titled Intercessory Prayer, Part 7. Be enriched as you listen. So as we have um, been journeying through this study that we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks, following Jesus in prayer, we've looked at different aspects of prayer. And what we've attempted to do, what we are focusing and learning on, is to look at the life, the ministry, and the teachings of Jesus when it comes to this topic of prayer. So if you've been in church or if you watched online, we've been looking at different aspects of prayer, different kinds of prayer. And we are at part seven today. Okay, so look at your neighbor and say, wow, part seven. The, the couple of things that we've spoken about over the last uh, weeks have been, first, we looked at uh, a, the pattern of prayer, how Jesus brought about a pattern of prayer. We spoke about believing prayer. Then we had persistent prayer. Last week, we studied on the prayer of surrender. And today, our focus is on intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer. So, we're going to look through scripture to see how Jesus interceded. And we're going to do what Jesus did. So, we couldn't be wrong or we can't be wrong when we do what Jesus does. Amen? Or did. Amen? Amen? So that's what we are going to learn. We're going to gain some insights by looking into scripture about how he interceded. And we would, you know, we were going to come together to practice what we're learning. So he practiced and he taught it and we want to do the same as well. So intercessory prayer. And I'm sure you, each of us have heard this term at some point of time. So what do we mean by intercessory prayer. It's a very simple definition. It is praying for others. It is standing on behalf of others in prayer. Where you're lifting the needs and the concerns of others to God. That's intercessory prayer. And as we read through scripture, we will consider some insights on intercessory prayer from the life and the teaching and the way Jesus interceded for people. So then we're going to be looking at some scriptures, so keep your Bibles ready. Ensure that you have your neighbor. You can share your Bible with your neighbor together, and let's get started. So we will start by beginning with how Jesus prayed to the Lord of the harvest. Jesus prayed to the Lord of the harvest. Let's look at scripture together. So if you have your Bibles, you could open it to Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And I'll read that alongside. You can follow through in your Bible. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. In this passage, you know, we see that Jesus, even as he ministered to people, he saw them in large crowds. It says multitudes. It says large crowds of people. So when he saw the multitudes, when he saw large crowds of people, there is something that's described over there of how he was moved. What does it say? He was moved with compassion. He was moved 
with compassion. And why was he moved with compassion? It was because of the state that they were in. You would read that. It says they were weary. They were scattered. In some other uh, versions, it's written they were distressed. They were helpless. And so Jesus had compassion when he looked at the crowds of people who were helpless, who were weary, who were scattered. And he uses, to, he uses pictures, word pictures to describe them, right? So that the understanding gets better. And he uses two word pictures. One that says, sheep without a shepherd. So sheep without a shepherd are lost, right? And he talks about the harvest. So our focus is on the harvest today. So while Jesus described the people as harvest, he was also pointing out something else. He said, he was pointing out the need for laborers, the need for workers to reap this harvest. So the harvest is plentiful. The people, the multitudes are there, but they were ripe enough to know about Jesus. They were right, they were right, but the laborers are few. So what do we do when we see that there is a need for more laborers? What do you do when you, when you see that? Jesus taught us to pray to the Lord of the harvest, to bring in more laborers, praying to the Lord of the harvest, to bring in more laborers. Why? So that they will be sent to the fields to be harvested. So what can we, what can you and I learn from here? Is this something that you and I can practice? If God has placed, and I'm sure God has placed each one of us in a community, each one of us maybe in a region, in a workplace, in a city, in a nation, and when we look at those around, we see the condition of the crowds, we see the condition of the people, harassed, stressed, broken. And what does God call for us to do? To pray to the Lord of the harvest and to ask that laborers are sent forth to, be, to, to have them be harvested. So wherever you are, Whichever situation, whichever workplace or school or college that you, that you may be in, if you are moved by the spiritual condition of the people around you, intercede. Intercede to the Lord of the harvest. Say, Lord, you are the Lord of the harvest. Send in your laborers. Now, even as you pray, see what God will have you do. When you look at Jesus, he did what he taught. So as he prayed, if you flip through into the next chapter, the beginning of that chapter talks about how he appointed and selected 12 apostles for the purposes of what he was doing. He appointed 12 people into the ministry. So he prayed and he went in to do what he was led to do, what he was called to do. So for us, even though we pray, let's take efforts or time to mobilize these workers for the kingdom of God. Mobilize these, these laborers for the kingdom of God. Maybe you look to assemble to see how you can equip, how you can empower workers for, your king, for his kingdom. And one of the best opportunities that we see which we make available is to go in for mission trips. You may have a certain skill. You may have something that you can build. You can give in to those who, who are laboring in, in, the, in the fields there. So as you do that, you know, as you pray, go ahead, go and equip others to bring about the harvest. See what way you can be involved. It can be in missions, in whatever way that you can be involved to bring about that harvest. So pray to the Lord of the harvest. So can we say, let, maybe look at your neighbor and say, time to pray to the Lord of the harvest.
Wonderful. As we keep looking into scripture, there's another observation that we make about how Jesus interceded. And this was he interceded for cities. He interceded for cities. The verses that we're going to be looking at is, he, we, he, it shows that how Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem. Weeping comes as a place of pleading and praying. He wept for, over the city of Jerusalem. So let's open again into Luke 19, 41, verses 44. And as, as I read it, you could follow through once again. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. What was the reason that Jesus wept for the city of Jerusalem. Through just what he said, you can make out how troubled he was about what was about the city. Jesus wept for the city because they had rejected him. He had come and they hadn't recognized him as, as the Messiah. They hadn't recognized him as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So they were dead. They were blinded in their condition, in their spiritual condition. And you'd see that, you know, because they were blinded, it would have caused them to miss what God was doing for them. The peace that could have been there in that city. The prosperity that could have been there in the city. The good that, that would have come out. Because of what they missed in their spiritual connection with the Messiah, the entire city was raised and, and uh, broken to the ground. So while the scripture does not explicitly state this, we know, we can assume, we can safely assume that Jesus prayed for, and prayed for the city. And uh, that because he was so moved by the spiritual condition of the city, he prayed to the Father for the people in the city. What is your heart like for the spiritual condition of the city that you live in? We've been living here, some of us have been living here for years, you know, years and years, decades, and we've seen what's happened to our city. Where are we at being moved with compassion in the same way that Jesus was, to weep for the city and bring the city under prayer, to intercede for the city. So if you are moved, take the step further. Pray for your city. Intercede for the well-being of the city. Intercede for the people in the city, that they meet the Lord Jesus. Pray for the peace and the prosperity of our city, for the favor of the Lord to fall on our city, that the work of the enemy be broken in our city. That's our responsibility. That's what we are called to do. This is our home. This is our place. You want the place that you stay in clean, isn't it? You wouldn't like garbage and dirt in and around your home. You wouldn't allow miscreants to come into your home. You do intercede. You do something to ensure that you keep your home clean. Pray for the city. Intercede for the city. So let's follow after what Jesus did and intercede for our city. Amen? So Bangalore, we are a church of intercessors. Amen? We're going to see the power of God being brought down, the glory of God being brought down in our city. Amen? Amen. Okay. We move in to the next thing that we see Jesus doing is 
to intercede to thwart Satan's schemes. He interceded to thwart Satan's schemes. And we see this um, in an encounter that Jesus has with Peter. So just as Jesus was nearing the time of his arrest and his crucifixion, there is this man, Peter, who brings about an extremely bold claim. And he says, Lord, I will never desert you. Right? A bold claim. And he comes and says, Lord, never, never will I desert you. Let's read to see on. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Through this verse in verse in 31, we see how Jesus saw, he, ex he expressed through prophetic revelation of the Holy Spirit that there was an attack on Peter. So he, Jesus, through the revelation that he had, was able to see into the spiritual realm, was able to see beyond what, what was happening right in front of his, his eyes. And what does he indicate to Peter? He says, Peter, you know, Satan has asked, it says asked in some, um, some versions, or it says desired or requested to sift you. Satan has asked to sift you. But, but Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. So what did Satan want to do? He wanted to sift Peter like wheat. So if you've ever gone to your villages and you've seen your grandmother's grand aunt sifting wheat, you would see how violently it is done. I guess some of us do it even now. I can't imagine, but like how violently it is done. So sifting, sift, sifting wheat is a metaphor that is used which means to shake someone apart. To shake in such a way that you break them down. So when you sift the wheat, it breaks off. And what happens? The shaft gets blown away by the wind. So Jesus saw into the spiritual realm and said, Peter, you're being sifted by Satan, like wheat. You're being violently shaken and the tendency of you being blown away, you falling away from me is evident, is being seen. So what did that indicate? What was Jesus trying to tell um, Peter? That Satan intended to shake Peter's faith, to break his faith so forcefully that he would fall and that he would prove that God's faithful servant was lacking. So it also expressed that, that Satan had an intent to get Peter far away from being in the proximity of the Lord Jesus as well as in the calling that he, was, he, he had. That Satan wanted him to move away from the purpose that God had intended for him. But we see Jesus interceded. Jesus interceded and he did not allow. In fact, he prevented this from happening. How? Through his prayer and through his intercession. What is the learning that we can have from here? There may be times, you know, and, and I think that's happened maybe to all of us, where you think about somebody or you've dreamt about somebody. One of my friends sitting here had a dream of me 
you, so, or you've dreamt or you, you've, you've had a word over them or you've had a vision and you call them up and you discuss and you pray with them and they say, you know, that's exactly what I'm going through. This is exactly the place that I'm in. So what do we learn from here? Through prophetic insight, the Holy Spirit can reveal to us what may be happening in the spiritual realm, realm in the lives of somebody else, in what's going on in, in someone's workplace, in their school, in their personal lives. And what do we do? We can engage in intercession. We can engage in prayer. Why? To thwart, to stop, to preempt all the attack of the enemy, all the darts that the enemy pours into them. And to pray that the, the enemy does not carry out the plans over their lives. And if you're a parent, I'm sure you have done this as well. When you see your children getting into, getting away from the comfort of home into the real world and the kind of challenges that they face, you know that the enemy is waiting like a prowling lion, waiting to devour them, to, to come against them. As a parent, you, we are called to intercede like Jesus did intercede, pray on behalf of our children, that every work of the enemy will be null and void. Why? What authority do we have as we do that? By the blood of the Lamb. We stand in authority to call against, to come against every attack of the enemy, everything that the enemy wants to do against our children, to keep them away from their pur purposes, to keep them away from their proximity to God. So you and I stand in that place to make that intercession. Amen? So if you have someone you're thinking about or you've, you, have, you have experienced in your spirit, God has revealed to you in your spirit about somebody, pray for them, intercede on their behalf. Intercede for them. Amen? Just like Jesus did. And it is biblical to do so. Amen? All right. So what did we cover up till now? We intercede for the city and to intercede to thwart Satan's attacks. Are we all awake or do we need an intercession for waking up? Okay, great. We move on to look at how Jesus interceded for believers. Interceding for believers. You know, it's amazing when you look at John chapter 17, the entire chapter talks about how one Jesus prayed for his disciples, for the church, and prayed for future believers in time to come. And we have this completely recorded in John 17. We may not have the time to go through the entire chapter, so we encourage you to go home, to read the chapter, to meditate on the chapter, but today we will look at some prayer points that we can use to pray for other believers. We are a home of believers, we are a family of believers, and we can pray for one another just like Jesus did. And we can pray for the same things that Jesus prayed for. So if you have your Bibles, you can open up to John 17. I'll take you through some verses on what and how we can engage in an intercession for believers. If you look at verse 9, we see that Jesus prayed for those whom the Father had given him. He acknowledges that they, that the people belong to the Father. So let's read that verse, verse 9. He says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Isn't it amazing to know that the King of Kings, Lord of Lords is praying for you? I think I need some more excitement on that. The, the Lord prays for you. 
mean, you can just keep thinking about it, keep saying it over and over and again, said, Lord, you are praying for me. And we're going to look at more of this next week as Jesus being the great high priest. But just to know that even before you and I were conceived in our mother's womb, years before he remembered, he knows you and me, and he prays for us. So Jesus prayed for all of us who belong to the Father. He prays for us. What does he pray for? Let's look in deep. Verse 11 says, through your Keep through your name those whom you have given me. Keep through your name those whom you have given me. Keep meaning to watch over. To guard with a watchful eye. You know, if you've noticed how, how animals watch their young, they will not turn to the left or to the right. They are so keen in the way they watch. You know, the mother hen watches over her chicks. So the same way, Jesus is praying, God, keep them in safety. Watch over them. Jesus is praying for your and mine, my safety. And you're coming in and you're going out now and forevermore. Jesus prays for our safety. He prays for the unity that they may be one as we are one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit experienced togetherness, experienced unity. And he prays that we will all be one, united in love, not bickering and gossiping about each other, but we will come together in unity, in safety and in unity. That's what he prayed for. So Jesus prayed for our safety and our, and our unity. Verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. Sanctify. Sanctify means to keep them apart, to keep them holy. With whatever is going on in the world around, keep them holy. Sanctify them by your truth, by the truth of your word. So Jesus knows the kind of lies that are being thrown at you and me at every point of time. But he says, sanctify them, keep them apart by the truth of your word, where he says, I, you are my beloved. You are my royal priesthood. You are mine. I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. He said, he's prayed that we will be set apart and holy, will be sanctified for his use. Next one, verse 20. Verse 20 shows that how Jesus extended his prayer for those who will become believers even in the future. Let's read that verse. I do not pray for these alone, not just for those who are here alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So he's prayed for those whom you are going to bring to Christ one day. He's already prayed for that. So we too can pray and intercede for people and matters in the future. Maybe at your workplace, you know, you pray for those who you're going to employ. If you're having a business of your own, pray for those who you're going to employ. Say, Lord, I just pray for them. I pray for that they will believe you, that they will come to the saving grace of Jesus. If you're going to college next year, pray for your classmates and say, I pray for the person sitting on my left and on my right, that they will know the Lord Jesus. Maybe you're waiting for a new help to come home. Pray for them, say that they will see the light of the gospel. Pray for those who are yet for future believers. So what does Jesus pray for, for the future believers? Let's look at that. Verses 21 to 23. Verse 21. Jesus prayed for their perfect unity. Once again, verse 21, it says that they all may be one 
as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one. Jesus loves unity. He loves people coming together in one accord, in one spirit, in one mind, in one body, that they will be one. Verse 21 again, this latter half, that the world may believe that you sent me. For the world to believe through us, that whoever we're going to meet, or whoever is going to come about, or who they're going to meet, the Lord has prayed that, that they will believe who he is. Verse 22, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as you are one. Jesus has prayed that his glory will be present in us, and we will manifest his glory in all that we do, that we will show forth his glory, we will shine who he is, the light of who he is, we will show forth that glory. And people who see us will know that Christ lives within us. So if you have had someone call, coming to you and saying, hey, there's something different about you, Jesus has prayed for that. That, your, that his glory will be revealed through you. So if you've been patient with a difficult person, Jesus has prayed that his glory will be manifested in your life He's prayed for that. So manifesting his glory and, be, and his glory being revealed through us, he's prayed for that. And that's what we can pray also for others, for believers. And verse 23, that the world would know that we are loved by God. Verse 23 reads, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. The world will see that you are a favorite of the Lord Jesus. You like to be a favorite? The world will see that because he's prayed for it. And that's where we stand. We could stand for another believer and say, Lord, I pray that others will know that he is your favorite. He's your blue-eyed boy. Your favorite. Verse 24. Jesus also prays for his disciples and believers to be with him and see him in his glory. He's already prepared. He's prepared a place for us. And he's awaiting the time that he's going to be enjoying the feast with us. So he's prayed that we will be with him and see him in his glory. So by name, he's saying, Jean, I pray that you will be enjoying a feast with me. And he's called you each by name. Say that by name. So Jesus has taken my name, said he wants me with him. And he's prayed that that will happen. Isn't that encouraging? That the Lord who's done it for us actually stands in a place of intercession and is also praying for us. Amen. Okay. And verse 26. That the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. He prayed that we may have the Father's love in us and experience Christ in us. That we will experience the love, the tangible love of God. The remarkable, amazing love of God. We will experience it by his ways, by, by what he does for you, the way that he communes with you, the way that he pours out his blessings to you. You will experience the love of the Father. You will experience Christ in you. So all these that we spoke about are prayer points that you can pray for one another. You can pray for other believers maybe other individuals, other people in your community. That's what we can do to intercede what Jesus prayed for. He showed us what to do. Open the Bible, pray. Pray. Amen? So we're going to have a whole room of intercessors for each other today. Let's move to the last point. Jesus showed by example to intercede for sinners. He showed by example to intercede for sinners. 
In John 17, in his prayer, Jesus expresses his desire. He expresses his heart for the world to believe in him. Not even one to be lost, but the entire entirety of mankind, of humankind, to believe in him. And of course, Jesus went to the cross to provide the salvation for all. So his work on the cross is also referred to as the work of intercession. So even as he prayed, he did. He did that. He went to the cross to save us from our sins so that he could give an open door to every sinner, to everyone who comes to him. He is that work uh, of intercession. And we will look at this much more in, into, next, into next week. Let's look at the last verse in Isaiah 53 verse 12. This entire chapter talks about Jesus and how he made intercession for the sinners. So let's read. Isaiah 53 verse 12. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word intercession here in Hebrew is a word paga, which means to come in between, which means to intervene or to encounter, to stand on behalf of, or also to mean to strike down as if like you, you break down or you overcome an enemy. It means to come in between. He made intercession by actually doing something about the very problem, about the problem of sin. He made intercession, which is he bore our sins on the cross. So what do we do when we intercede for a sinner or intercede for someone who doesn't know the Lord? And here are very simple three things that we can, we can do. Is one, to bring them to the Father in prayer. So you would, we would know that, you know, when we are praying for a sinner, you're dealing with the effects of sin and what Satan has done over their lives. So we bring them to the Father. You know, just bring them in prayer. Remember them. Bring them in prayer. And with the authority that Jesus has given you, confront and overthrow the work of the enemy in their lives. Come to with that authority to break down every work of the enemy. How? Because we stand on the finished work of the cross. We say, God, you have died for this person. Now, if, you, if, if, there are, if there are people you're praying for, think of them and, 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 and speak alongside with me. He said, Lord, you have died for the sin of this person. And I come against anything that breaks, that keeps this person from really seeing who you are. I overpower it. I overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. I speak that in authority. And lastly, meet with them and bring them, invite them, invite them to be reconciled to God. Maybe take some time to go pray with them. Invite them to church. Maybe uh, sit and watch uh, a service with them. Send some scripture to them. Invite them. So our intercession we need also to get to be active, to bring them to God the Father, to break down all powers of the enemy, as well as to invite them. Amen? May I request the, um, the worship team to please come up. So we did see a lot of intercession that Jesus did. But And there are, there are more things that Jesus taught about intercession as Jesus being the great high priest. And this is what we will look in 
to, uh, next week in a later chapter. So I'd want to encourage all of you to pray like Jesus, to, to intercede like Jesus interceded. Following Jesus in prayer. Following Jesus in intercessory prayer. Calling on the Lord of the harvest to bring in laborers as you see people, as you see crowds. Pray for the people in your community. Pray for the people in your city. Pray for the people in your land that they will see God. Pray for people who are being oppressed by the enemy, who are being brought down by the work of the enemy. Pray for them that, that Satan's schemes and Satan's attacks will be thwarted, will, be, will, will not pro progress, will not proceed because of, of, of what Jesus has done for us. Pray for all the believers. Pray for, for the church. And mostly, pray for the sinners. Take time to do that. As, as we go back, let's take that time to do what Jesus did, to intercede. That's one part of prayer, which is so effective. Maybe some of you sitting here were an answer to an intercession, were an answer to somebody's prayer, faithful prayer over your lives. And we are called to pray like Jesus did. Could we all stand and respond to what we have heard? We're going to be doing something a little different today. We're going to practice what we heard. We're going to intercede. And we're going to intercede for our nation. We're going to intercede for our city, intercede for our state, intercede for other states and our nation together as a family of intercessors. You know, when we gather together in His name, He is there in our midst. Amen? And He will surely hear our prayer. So let's just take time to worship. And I will return and we will do this together.
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness of every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the whole. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the stream, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name Jesus, shout Jesus, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in all the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, your name is power. Your name is healing, your name is life over us, over all that we have. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, but like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind I know there is peace within the presence I speak Jesus Okay church, we're going to do something different We're going to be interceding for our nation we're going to uphold the state of Manipur right now as a body of believers. So I'd like you to gather in twos, maybe just the person sitting next to you. Or if you're a family, you can gather in as family. But every person connecting with one another, we're going to intercede. It's our home. It's our land. And we need to intercede. We need to pray. So if you can just come together, two by two, maybe three, fours, together, together, and we're going to pray. And we're going to pray loudly. We're going to, we're, we're going to intercede boldly for the spiritual condition of our nation. We're going to pray that our people, our land, will know who Jesus is. We're going to pray that the work of the enemy be broken in the state of Manipur. We're going to pray that together. So please gather together, maybe as families, as twos. I'd like you to pray loudly. You know, you could pray in tongues. We're going to intercede for our nation. We have been called. This is our home. Like I said, we do not want miscreants in our home. We want to eradicate what the enemy does in our home. So a couple of things. Pray for the spiritual condition of our, of us, of our nation. You can uphold Manipur in your, in your prayer. That every person would know the Lord Jesus. That salvation would come. That peace 
would come into the state of Manipur. Can we just gather together and pray? Let's have a, let's, let's have a loud, loud prayer going on. Come church, let's, let's get there. Come on. You could gather together in twos. Just who you're sitting next to. Just gather to just turn around together. Just pray. Hold hands together. Pray. Pray. Intercede. Intercede. We are called to intercede. The Holy Spirit is here praying. The Holy Spirit is here to lead us, to give us revelation, to give us insights into what we pray for for our nation. Word says when two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. He's there in their midst. Pray, pray, intercede, intercede for our nation, for our city, intercede for our state. Join hands, God. We join hands, God. Join hands in prayer, God. Join hands to intercede, God. Your glory, your glory come, Father. Worship you, God. Your glory, Father. Your glory sweep over our nation, Master. Sweep over our nation. Your mercy fills our nation, God. Your mercy fills our nation, God. Let's all pray together. God, we weep, God, for our nation. We pray your mercy over our nation, God. Your mercy come down, Lord, over our nation. Lord, from the north to the south, from the east to the west, we, we need you, Jesus. God, we pray for justice. We pray, Lord, that you will restore the brokenness of our nation. You will heal our land. Lord, sweep over this land, God, that the blood of Jesus brings peace over our land. Father, let every work of the enemy not be broken right now in Jesus' name. We uphold the state of Manipur, Father. We come to you in Jesus' name. Father, have mercy. Look upon us, Lord, with love, Father. Lord, we in authority, with the authority that you've given us, we trample over snakes and scorpions against our nation, against the state of Manipur. We pray for the people of Manipur. Let your kingdom 
Let your healing flow. Let the hand of the enemy be lifted up. And the grace of God flow through the streets of Manipur. Every home. Be broken down. The hand of the enemy be broken. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer. We come against the work of the enemy, Lord, in our nation. We come against every, every philosophy, every doctrine that's coming against our nation, that keeps it away from knowing the truth of God. We pray for the spiritual condition of our nation. We pray, God, that the eyes of the blinded will open, that you will enlighten them with the power of your love, that the gospel of Jesus would flow through everywhere, that people would confess that you are God, that people would know that you are God, that you will break everything that stands against them experiencing the love of Jesus. We speak the spirit of the fear of God over our land over every man, over every woman, over every child. We break the dominion of darkness. We call it into light. We break the dominion of Satan and call them into God. We thank you. We thank you that you have done it, Father. We intercede. We're an army praying, God, for our nation who will know you. We pray for the integrity, Lord, of our leaders. Lord, that they will stand in justice, remove temptation and corruption from them, Father. Lord, that salvation will come into their homes and into their hearts, God. Thank you that they will rule with honor. They will rule with love. They will rule with justice. Sovereign God, you are king over our nation. You are king over our states, God. Thank you for the healing flow of the Lord Jesus over us. Thank you, God. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you for hearing our name. Let's all just lift our hands and give Lord a great thanks, great gratitude. Let, let, let our hearts be filled with gratitude for what he's doing. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you. Thank you, God. I just want to take time to just pray for, for us who to intercede for those who are lost. It may be in our families. It may be among people in your workplace. Let's pray for them. Let's ask that God will reveal his heart to them. That the spirit of God will reach to them. Father, we pray that their eyes, their spiritual eyes be opened. That they will be enlightened, Father. That the scales in their eyes will fall off. And they will experience the fullness of God. That they will come to the knowledge of God. The saving grace of God. The Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That their hearts will be open to the love of God. Lord, we bring them before you. We over, overcome and we overthrow every power of the enemy over their lives. Because of the finished work of the cross. Thank you. Thank you, God. Teach us, help us, Lord, to minister back to them, Father. Thank you, God. Lord, I pray for every believer in this home, every believer in this house today, all those who are watching. Father, we come and we intercede for the, for the health of people, Father. Lord, we pray for healing among people. We pray, God, for every bondage, every brokenness to be, to be set loose right now. May healing come flowing like a flood. Lord, we pray for deliverance, God. Every mind, every heart that is broken, bent down with anxiety. Father, we release your power and your spirit over them. Anoint, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Father, I speak peace, God. Lord, you have been chastised, Lord, so that we will have peace. We will have shalom, Father. I speak peace, Lord, over each one of us over here right now, Father. I speak peace over your people, Father. I speak health 
over your people. I speak the supernatural work of God over your people. I, I speak connection. I speak intimacy. I speak wholeness. I speak closeness into your people, Father. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, God. Worship you. Lord, we thank you, God, that you have called us, Lord, for a great work to intercede on behalf of others, Father. Lord, we pray for ourselves as a body of Christ, Lord, as a church, that you will keep us safe, Lord, that you will keep us, Lord, in unity, that you will keep us protected from the evil one, God, that we will be in love, Lord, with you, that your glory will be manifested in our lives. We will represent you to the world outside, Lord, that you will equip and empower us, God, as a, as a body of believers, Father. Lord, that we will grow in the wisdom and the knowledge and the word of God, Father, that we will grow, Lord, supernaturally doing things for you, Father. We thank you, God, that you have heard our prayer. We love you. We worship you. We praise you. We ask all these in the matchless and the powerful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen, 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 Amen. Let's just receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.